conference. Um, while you're coming up, I was just going to say that I thought that they were, it was nice to have the detail and the organization of the warrants. I thought that was really helpful. Yeah. And yes, ma'am. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos Hills. I would agree with that comment. They're uh, much easier to read and to really see what, what is going on. And to that end, I was curious to see on page 23 that there was a trip to Washington, D.C. on May 24th by Ms. Strom, Mr. Duncan, Ms. Schumacher, Director Daniels, and, and Chairman LeHue. And um, I don't recall hearing that trip approved in your, um, your proceedings. And if further in the, um, the packet in another item on page 102, it says there is another trip to come to D.C. for you at the end of this month. So I would like some uh, public discussion about the purpose and nature of these trips and uh, the need for them. I know you have uh, paid a great amount of money to Capital Edge to do the lobbying for you in Washington, D.C., but I want to know why um, the, the five of you went to Washington, D.C. on May 24th and there was no public approval or discussion of it. Also, um, really want to thank you for putting in the warrants on page 35, the uh, surface water transfer purchase price um, that's dated May 10th uh, for $14,904. And I'd like to know the volume of water that that paid for. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, any other comments on warrants? Is that it? You mean to approve them? I don't yep. think we have oh. approval. Well, I'll move approval of the warrants. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I'll just, um, for the sake of the public, since that was brought up, um, the there has not been a trip on May 24th. That's just when a bill was paid. Um, so those are flights. And the purpose of the trip is to do our best to get funding for a project instead of having our ratepayers bear the entire cost. So we've been advised by the experts that it is most effective if we go. None of us really would like to go, but we're trying to help our customers, and that's all. Um, the other item that was pulled from the consent agenda was 3.9. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to pull these items for better discussion and for answering my questions. Um, 3.9 is approve the updated district policy allowing customer options of alternate metering systems. Um, that is, as I read it, you, your district would charge people $10 a month if they do not want to have a smart meter installed. I want to know that that is uh, a conforming policy with this county of Santa Cruz and with the state of California. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay. You've been provided information many times on wireless microwave meters and the biological harm. And what you really should have, I think, is an informed consent form from every single person who is getting these meters on their homes, that this is known to cause harm DNA strand breakage, calcium leaching from the cells, increased cancer risk, that people who are living by cell towers and smart meters experience fatigue and headache, increased diabetes incidence, and the list goes on. These are not safe in any respect, and this is just proliferating. And I want to leave you also a copy of a rather new documentary called 5G Apocalypse, the Extinction Event. And it has 
a number of scientists whose literature I've given you, and um, uh, so I will provide that. And I think it is not only irresponsible, but bordering on the criminal when you have been informed that something is harmful and been provided with the data and you impose this on the public without their consent. I, and it's an experiment that is in violation of the Nuremberg principles that says that people have to be informed of all the consequences of these kind of exposures and give their consent. That has not taken place. Uh, there have also been many problems with um, fires, uh, overcharging. It's just a death technology from beginning to end, and I don't think any of your customers have been informed or given consent to this, and I think it should be stopped. We did have our water measured before without this, and it be also has a big carbon footprint in the manufacture and distribution and the e-waste with all of this. So I, an opt-out is like and I did this with the PG&E meters. Sorry, but your time is up. Thank it's you It's an much. extortion fee. Thank you very to much. To be paid, not to be Thank harmed. You very much. Extortion fee. I approve, uh, I would like to make a motion to approve 3-9. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to just comment. Marilyn, I, I don't think we agree on the facts and I'm insulted that you think that I would um, vote for and go in a direction, and I don't want to start a conversation where it's going to, I'm not thinking. He's, he's just making, no, you're done yeah, talking yeah, up here. That that would harm people. Okay. So I just want to put that on record that I do not agree with the facts that you've presented. Right, we had a thorough review of the scientific literature at the time we made the decision and also this change actually lessens the transmission anyway. About two orders of magnitude. Right, so significantly. Right. Um, okay, so now it is time. Um, by the way, on the consent calendar, I wanna um, just mention that we did vote for Director Christensen to be part, part of, uh, <laughs> of the LAFCO as an alternate. Did you vote on that okay. last? We did. Okay. All right, so. Um, Oral and written communications, um, anyone from the board? Uh, I just wanted to um, draw our attention to, uh, it just popped up on one of our emails that we, I think we all get, but it's the Water Education Foundation has uh, in their Western, they did a review of the effect of saving water on the whole. Effect of what? Our whole water system, the sewage, sewage and water system. It, might be worth looking into because it's uh, it wasn't to cast blame or to say something is bad, saving water is bad or it could become bad. It was an attempt, uh, t an attempt to look at all the repercussions of a policy change, which now Californians are facing with the probability of another extended drought at some point in our future that you know, the, there's pressure to continually save more and more water, and that might have a, it's not just an anecdotal evidence, it's a more of a, there's more concrete evidence that it causes uh, problems in sewage treatment systems mm -hmm. throughout the state. That's all. There's a limit. Just a review. Yeah. It's just there's a, a limit review, and it might be worth Great. getting as a reference, that's all. Okay. Okay, and I was just gonna mention, just coming back from Seattle late last night, I just noticed at the airport that all of the toilets were being flushed with rainwater, which I thought, you know, it's nice to not use perfectly good drinking water for flushing toilets. Um, all right, so nothing else. Anyone on in the public who wishes to speak on an item not on tonight's agenda? Thank you.
Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I note there's a bit of change in your agenda. You're now combining oral and written communications um, all together here. And I note on page 71 of your packet, it talks about written communications. And again, I wanna um, point out to you that if the, public, if the public correspondence in order to get into your board packet has to be submitted by four o'clock Wednesday prior to your meeting, and yet your agenda does not come out publicly until Friday, how can people realistically send you communication regarding things that are on the agenda and have them included in your packet? You can. So I'd like to ask you to change that policy to conform uh, when people can get uh, information to you and have it included in the agenda packet by for the Tuesday following. I, I see that um, it, it, it always says um, the communication will be available on the district's website at the earliest opportunity. Well, I looked to, um, just before I came here and the three pieces of information that you have um, on the back table, and thank you for supplying those. Uh, none of those are on your website. To that end, I want to um, follow up uh, with a piece of communication here that I see is from Craig Wilson. You have used his persona, his influence in the community as the um, a public safety officer for the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department to really come out in support of your Water SoCal project, and I protest that. He is not a, a, an expert in water. He is a very great guy. I like him a lot, but I feel like he's being used, and I don't think it's fair. I see in his communication to the Santa Cruz City Council, these three uh, letters are all to the Santa Cruz Kid City Council, uh, begging them to uh, approve the agreement that you've put through with them. Uh, hopefully hoping to get on June 25th at their last council meeting. He says, Pure Water SoCal will meet all safety and quality standards. How can he say that? He's not an expert. This project will do the least harm to our local environment by discharging less water into the sanctuary. It's not going to reduce the contamination. It will concentrate it. Be more energy efficient over the other options. How can he say that when water transfers would take virtually little energy and the reverse osmosis energy demand is very high? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm up. Thank you very much. Time is up. Thank you. I just want to say I protest that you're trying to push through the agreement with the city council. Your time is Thank up. You. Thank you. All righty. Anyone else? on this specific issue. Are we on public comments now? Items not on the agenda? Yep, yes. we are. Okay, I just wanted to be sure of that. We all know that firefighters are considered the strongest of the strong and the least likely to complain. I, in 2004, there was a test done on firefighters, comparing those who live, were sleeping in firehouses with antennas on the roof compared to those not. And what happened was that the results of this study prompted the International Association of Firefighters, Canada and the US, to call for a moratorium on putting these radiation emitting antennas on firehouses. And the symptoms were what a lot of people complain of, microwave sickness. They were like in a brain fog, coordination off, slowed reaction time, headaches, dizziness. Susan Foster was one of the ones who arranged this study. <coughs> now we all know if it's doing that to the firefighters, we're all in trouble. And this is a letter she wrote to Governor Brown two years ago opposing Senate Bill 649 
and talking about people have a right to health and to decide what is happening to them. With the Senate bill, and this is in process now with the other bills, installing 5G in the public right of way everywhere, every few houses outside people's bedroom windows with this additional pulsed radiation. And this is an intensification of the destruction that's been taking place since the Telecom Act was passed in 1996. And you feel insulted? I feel insulted that our rights are being taken away and that we are being forced into more and more radiation and that people believe the propaganda of these, the telecom industry selling these products. We were assured years ago by doctors smoking cigarettes, it was fine. You feel tense, coughing, go home and smoke a cigarette, it will relax you. And saying this is my favorite cigarette, Thank you, their Marilyn. favorite. So here's from I Susan think we understand Foster. And one more, I'll just say the title. Will Thank the you. telecom industry be the final straw in our planet's ecosystems? Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so let us move on to the next item, which is um, the management update. I don't have anything uh, to add for conservation customer service field. Do you have any questions? Quick one. Um, I know that we're just starting with the AMI upgrade. Um, when again, I could not remember when you said customers would be able to have access to the information on a more real-time basis. We're thinking um, probably towards early fall that okay. we'll be able to offer up the portal access Great. to the people that have been uh, upgraded, that have had their registers replaced, and where we have the infrastructure in for that area. Okay, and then and we And then over the course of the year-long project, as more and more services and infrastructure added, we'll be making that available to those customers. And then we'll be evaluating kind of changes in their water use. Mm -hmm. We'll be looking, staff will be looking on a daily basis at the leak reports even before customers have access to the portal and Great. we'll be acting on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else on? No? Okay. Moving right into engineering. just had four bullets and I can answer any questions on them if you have any. I do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, it worried me that we already had to have a tank coating evaluated and you know on the Cornwell tank you said it found some abnormalities. Does that mean it might not last as long as it's supposed to? Because aren't those supposed to last like 20 years or? Yeah, generally it was really looking really good. It wasn't until we actually got into the office and looked and we saw a few small um, bubbles, uh, pimples, I would call yeah. them, in a small area, isolated area. Okay. Um, we didn't see that anywhere else, but we're going to drain the tank. It's normal that we inspect it within the two-year period okay. of the warranty, so it is covered. And, um, you know, we did have an inspector there throughout the whole course of the recoding. Um, don't, don't think that the whole tank is going to delaminate or anything. I, I think it's a, it's a small enough blemish that we do want to drain the tank and look at it, and they will make repairs and, and do it as if okay. perfect coating would have. Okay. And, and the I outside looked great, and the inside looked generally really good other than these small blemishes. Okay, and I also just wanted to thank you all for working with the Seacliff Park residents to help them find a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I too don't have anything else to add unless you have any questions. Operations and maintenance, everybody happy? Well, that's good, thank you. Thank you. Um, special projects, there she is. Hi, yes. I don't have anything else to say except I did just want to point out since it was brought up um, earlier. Um, the public outreach and um, committee has been working on creating kind of a new, some more awareness to the community water plan and building off of the community water plan being formed by our community members. Um, also just, you know, a lot of people have 
provided us a lot of information or questions and answers. And so we've actually created kind of this, um, it's not on my screen. Oh, is it on my screen? So I did okay. just want to clarify that this one is not um, in response to Pure Water Soquel. Mr. Wilson um, had provided us, you know, kind of his opinion and his feelings related to the efforts that the district is doing to combat seawater intrusion. So the quote that he has here is really, the problem of saltwater intrusion and ongoing overdraft must be addressed. I am pleased the water district is responding to this serious issue before it's a full scale crisis. Um, again, just to kind of reiterate, that is something that our community has focused on, mm -hmm. the awareness that we have an inadequate water supply. We did a phone survey, 79% of our customers said that that is something that they recognize and that over 65% of the people in that survey said that they are very concerned about the severe shortage. So um, recognizing that you know we are quote unquote in this together, that's the campaign and we will be doing um, other advertisements and other pieces on our website just to raise awareness. And, and I think actually you've done a great job in just getting the word out and, and letting people express and you know go ahead and speak publicly about their views. So I appreciate it. Anyone else for? Okay, we good. Um, HR. I don't have anything oh, to add, but I can. Answer questions. Finance. Are you going to do finance? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I forgot okay. finance. Okay. Um, but I, Leslie's not here, so I, I guess I forgot and you were waiting, so we'll go Jim. back. Okay. Any questions I can answer? <laughs> Congratulations on being one of the barriers top 10. Thank you. Work yeah. Places. It's not top 10, but it's one of the top workplaces. One of the top workplaces. Talked top about workplace. that in a little okay, bit. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, that says a lot. And Ron, did something about finance you wanted to add? Yeah, I'll just point out uh, again in that vein of being customer advocates. Uh, finance, uh, after receiving some feedback, and this is highlighted in the report, uh, they extended uh, by an extra week, so 25%, um, the collection time on bills to give people an extra week, going from three weeks to four weeks, and just thought that was the right thing to do. So it's a, um administrative uh, act, so we, we just took care of it. Great. Any finance questions? Then then we'll go to Ron yeah. for so general we'll manager. Up, um, so. You know, I thought this was a, uh, it, we'll go to the graph first. It kind of shows you how recycled water has been uh, increasing over time. So since you can see right around early 80s, it just kind of took off and how it's being used. And if we go back up to the, to the quote, and this is a, from the Public Policy Institute of California, so they try to do unbiased reviews. But what caught my eye here was, uh, my eye here was, um, that they, you know, they're talking about the growing opportunity for water recyclers, especially with the new state laws. And then the bottom line, literally the bottom line, this will require close coordination between water suppliers and wastewater agencies. And I just think, you know, the city and us have been doing a good job and really a, a shout out to them for their efforts in, in collaborating with us and trying to, take the word wastewater out of the lexicon and, and make it resource water because we mm -hmm. all know that it's a, a valuable resource. Okay. Um, and anything else on your report? Ron? Nope, that's it. Can I add one thing? Sure. Just um, on the, the graphic on page 77, um, you know, where it has the actual parts per million? Mm -hmm. Um, mm hmm I just w thought maybe somewhere there we should put in that seawater is 35,000 so that people would know that at La Selva Beach it's basically half of sea, what seawater That's sea a good constant. point. And, and often we have 250 as the uh, secondary MCL. So we'll... Well, but even uh, just so people can compare with seawater. Yeah, yeah, both. Okay. okay. That was all I had. Good eye. Thank you. Else on general manager? Okay. And then... Let's see, that okay. does, I think, conclude the management update. So is there anyone from the public who wish to speak on the management update? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner, resident of Aptos. I'd like to point out to you an error on page 73 under the special projects uh, where it talks about the representatives of the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, the ad hoc committee on the city water commission 
is um, Commissioner Baskin, Will Schuzen, and Doug Engfer. Mr. Baskin is listed twice, but uh, Doug Engfer is also part of that. And it was actually um, chiefly uh, Commissioner Baskin's concern that that document looked like it hadn't been looked at by an attorney. So um, I am glad that they're looking at it more carefully. I am, uh, um, I am, I am disappointed that they bowed to the pressure of the presenters that night. Um, that did not really say the reason for the rush is that all grant money uh, to be reimbursed must be spent by February 29th, 2020, which is what I learned in one of the ex parte documents and declarations by um, uh, your general manager, Mr. Duncan. They didn't know that. They just were push to approve it and get it on the commission and uh, city council's June 25th uh, thing. So uh, the, the agreement, whatever they come up with, will not have been vetted by the full water commission and I think that's a travesty. Um, regarding the uh, recycled water and the graphic, I, I wanna know where's the purple pipe? in your district in going over the uh, documents lately i've seen that originally recycled water had tied to it irrigation and i'm not seeing any irrigation where's the purple pipe because there's plenty of use for that at cabrillo college athletic fields the golf courses uh, the 10 to 14 parks that are in your district there's a tremendous opportunity for using this water for irrigation that would also decrease pumping by seascape wells and by Cabrillo College's three very large wells. So um, I wanna see purple pipe <laughs> in your district. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So anything else on specifically the management update? And uh, Since you're discussing recycled water, it's very problematic, and I listened to the radio program where Ron Duncan and two of you were on the radio, Thank and you. somebody called in and said, what about the removal, this recycled water, of uh, pharmaceuticals and pesticides? And it was just glossed over, oh, well, like they're using recycled water here and there. Um, it must be okay, and the, the language you use, let's not say wastewater, let's say, what did you say, resource, or instead of, you know, this is sewage-treated water or poop water, effluent. Um, the language is used to convince people that this is something is good that really is very problematic. And I think this whole plan of, and it also begs the question, why are there so many poisons in our water? Why are these corporations allowed to pollute the earth and our bodies and all creatures on this planet? And then we're supposed to try to clean it up. I think recycled water is really uh, dangerous. If it's popular, it doesn't necessarily mean something is good. Where is the proof of safety? Where is the proof of no harm in using recycled water or sewage-treated water? Where is the proof? I don't see any, thank you. So since I was on the radio show and answered that question, I will um, say that I actually specifically said that wastewater treatment plants are not designed to remove pharmaceuticals. So whatever goes into rivers, whatever comes out of septic tanks into rivers and then gets treated at normal water treatment plants, <coughs> they're not designed to remove those. However, when you go to recycled water and go through microfiltration, that removes <coughs> some of them. Um, but by the time you go through reverse osmosis and advanced oxidation and disinfection, they're removed and it's safe to drink, <coughs> essentially, even though it's going to go through another step. So just wanted to clarify that. 
of the public since you brought it up and okay. and uh, the board <coughs> took a trip to Orange County Water District that's been doing this for decades and talked specifically with a vice president there who had been in charge of labs I think he might still be and um, he explained to us that the the process gets rid of um, uh, molecules that are above a, a certain size <coughs> and those molecules that it does get rid of are the pharmaceuticals they're above us that 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 threshold and they're also since you bring it up we had an unbiased um, panel of experts evaluate whether this was a um, whether the water coming out is safe and their conclusion was that it was safe. And mm -hmm. they had no reason whatsoever to come to that conclusion other than the scientific evidence. And once again, I mean, none of us would be doing this if we thought it was unsafe. Yeah. Uh, can I just follow up on a comment that was made about the uh, water commissioners? Appreciate the, uh, we did list uh, David Baskin twice, so thank you very much for that notification. Doug Infer was on that. Uh, just to be clear, in case it wasn't, um, it did go to the Public Works Commission of Santa Cruz first, and it got a 5-0 vote, the project contract to move forward. Then, subsequent to that, a couple weeks later, it came to the Water Commission with a 5-0 vote in favor of it, uh, based on conceptual uh, purposes. They liked the idea, they liked the, everything about it to move the contract forward. They did have some issues with some of the language, so they, they designated three committee members, Doug Infer, um, Linda, Will Susan, and David Baskin, to form a focus group with the water, com uh, water director and some others uh, to refine the language and see if it was ready to go uh, to the city council. And, and what I really want to, and so that, that was a 5-0 vote also there, but just the effort that those three commissioners put in over the last two weeks, my hat is off to them, and it was really public service. I mean, there was a lot of effort put in there to make sure it was absolutely where they wanted it to be so they could make a recommendation to the city council. And so, um, well, to the whole Santa, Santa Cruz staff and uh, those three commissioners in particular. Okay. Um, next item is district council. There's really nothing to report. The legislation isn't moving too much. They're working on the budget, and the cases have just kind of stalled, so I'm waiting. Okay. We have a couple of closed session items we'll talk about later. Okay. And then item 6.2 is uh, scopes of work for um, six different um, entities. Yes, typically um, after the fiscal year budget is approved by the board, we do um, reevaluate existing contracts that need to be uh, furthered for the following year. In terms of the Pure Water SoCal project, I have brought forth six proposed scopes of works, um, including budget uh, for next fiscal year. And if you have any questions, I can answer them. Just in summary, um, for the amount of uh, effort for the Pure Water SoCal project for this next fiscal year, this represents. Let me see, I think I wrote this down, 5%. Uh, okay. uh, questions? Then? Yes, Bruce. And reading through these, most of them seemed okay, but the one that kind of surprised me was the outreach one, the $150,000. Seems like a hell of a lot of outreach for something that we've kind of already got approved. So I wondered. And I, I, mean, I, so I, real, I realize that everything is on a you know, need to, to do basis, and we may not do it much of it, but I was a little surprised. Sure. Sure. You're talking about the data instincts? One? Yes, data instincts, instincts was one I have several notes. Number too. four. Page 104. Is yeah. yeah, I'll start high level on that, and then Melanie can jump in. Uh, if you, you know, since it was mentioned, go into some of these various uh, sites that do water purification. I think, I think you might have been to five total. But one of the leaders is Orange County, and one of the things that they said, uh, Ron Wildermuth, who's now since retired, but he was kind of the guru of this, if you remember, he said it was one of their secrets to success is the education component, and not education just before or when you get approved, and not when you just even produce water, but continually 
doing it after that. Uh, we may be in a little better position than they were, um, just because people have become much more accepting of this and, uh, and educated about it. Uh, so that's one thing. So I do think it behooves us and the community to, to, to keep educating and informing. But uh, they also uh, help us uh, formulate uh, plans and, and that sort of thing, too. So it's not just the traditional outreach that you think of. Let me just add, just I, since before you answer, so I thought, you know, staff seems like they do most of the work from what I see <laughs> on the public outreach. And so I just wanted to kind of get a feel from you about how much Data Instincts is actually doing, because I don't mm -hmm. really know. And then um, under, on page 108, they mentioned helping promote the educational mobile trailer and tracking effectiveness of this air uh, effort and and also the tracking the effectiveness of the on-site learning center so I hadn't heard about how they're tracking the effectiveness sure yes for in terms of data instincts over the years where they have helped us this is um, the highest contract that we've had this thus far they typically are below a hundred thousand sometimes even half of what we asked for this year so in fact he when we asked him to propose for this year um, I did ask for an up to amount, not to exceed, and based on um, if we needed them or not. Um, we have been increasing education um, and outreach for the project as well as district overall and in terms of the community water plan. And going forward with Pure Water Soquel and some of the efforts that we'll be developing, including potentially expansion of some of the outreach, uh, youth outreach, and other programs Data Instinct sometimes will help us strategize and kind of create a work plan for us to do that. Um, Videhi's time is um, very much focused on youth outreach. We've talked about whether or not we were going to cut back this year. We have not yet cut back on anything related to really the youth outreach or her participation in the Water Conservation Coalition. Um, that is another area that while it's regional, it does fall a lot on uh, Soquel Creek Water District to kind of shepherd that, that through. Um, for the metrics and um, data that was collected for the trailer and for the um, learning center, we did solicit some assistance from Data Instincts where we were capturing, uh, we do have a survey that comes for people that come in and come out and we are collecting that data and it goes into the, um, the annual reports. It's something that we're tracking and we had them do that instead of do that in-house. Okay. And what role does Thank Data you. Instincts have in that tracking? Data Instincts create, last year Data Instincts created the questions before and after and then they're the ones that are tallying it and they were gonna, they're gonna prepare like a okay. report. Yeah, as much as a traditional outreach, I mean, th this is their forte, recycled purified water. They're really, um, uh, advisors to us. We have a couple, and this is one team that we lean on for uh, high-level advice. I just wanted kind of to find yeah. out how much they're helping. I don't. I mean, if it's an up to amount, I'm yeah. personally okay with well, it. I'd like uh, report back on whether we go up to the up to as, as yeah. it's going along. Sure. And I'd I'd like to see. Well, I your point, Ron, about there's never enough outreach, especially on the. Um, a project where there's so much misunderstanding like recycled water purification um, and I'd like to to see without putting undue uh, work on the on the staff I'd like to see students and interns um, be involved with the outreach I think that's cost efficient and I leave it to staff to determine um, when and where to use use that that uh, strategy but the question I have is um, and this I could be an outlier here one, one of the uh, issues I have with data instincts is that to me uh, it's reaching out to a different demographic the in that their their graphics are beautiful um, expensive you know color etc um, Marin County and I just um, wonder whether the outreach committee has um, has a similar opinion 
that I do of, of that, you know, keeping it basic and we'll, we'll um, get the point, point across better than, than making it uh, too glitzy. Well, we just had a meeting of the outreach uh, committee, uh, yeah. committee this past week ago, and uh, we reviewed we reviewed all of the things that have that okay, good. our outreach uh, team has uh, been working on. And honestly, I don't I don't know how much that contract will ultimately be worth, how much they'll be asked to do, but it is really seems as if it would be helpful to have someone who's sort of out of the, not directly trying to be boots on the ground, but adding, adding, acting as a true consultant in this area and how best ways to present things. So it, otherwise, this task for this small team can quickly get yeah. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about students and interns, I agree with that in principle, but that is a whole nother level of more work. For the staff, I realize and it. Yeah, yeah, I realize and it. And they're pretty maxed out. But uh, but they just did the Waterwise Academy, which is not students and interns, but it's training people to yeah. then understand the system and then be advocates. It's exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's utilizing community members so to get the word out. Well, I, I'm I'm thinking back to the uh, iPad. You know, questions that were asked at farmers market and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. I, I know there were there were some issues with with some of the questions that were asked and how it was done, but something like that I I heard the feedback I heard was that it was it was well received within the community. So I don't know if that's something that that's available, and the cost certainly would be fairly low on that. Again, I'll leave it to the staff to determine. You know what? You know I'm not in touch with the workload and. And whether this creates undue amount of work. Okay, we'll incorporate some of that. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, any public comment on this item? Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. This is an astonishing amount of money <laughs> um, $881,194 total just for one year just for this project that's under legal battle and for which there's a lot of public resistance. I think you're taking a big risk here. I have questions um, regarding some of the things I read in the pr contract proposal. Um, Ms. Gutierrez is going to help you with the WIPIA loan applications. I'd like to know how much um, that was on your agenda last time. I asked to know more about it and, and was only told it was a federal loan program, but I still have not seen a dollar amount that the district is planning to ask for in this uh, low-cost federal loan, and that needs to be made public. I also am surprised to see yet another legal firm being brought on, uh, Hansen and Bridget in San Francisco, and for the s agreement uh, with the city of Santa Cruz alone, it's uh, $78,000. That, that raised my eyebrows, having been at the S uh, Santa Cruz City Water Commission and heard um, attorney David Baskin said, it looks like no attorney has ever looked at this agreement. <laughs> And Mr. Duncan said, well, actually, there have been three. So I really think you need to take a close look at this expenditure with this law firm and yet another law firm. Um, the information in the contract with ESA, to me, was very enlightening. Um, on page 95, it talks about how um, the conveyance construction would begin June 2020 and would be the only project component whose construction could occur within fiscal year 2019-2020. In the absence of detailed construction approach and schedule information, which follows what the lack of information in your EIR, uh, we assume c conveyance facility installation will involve simultaneous construction in two separate pipeline segments or headings beginning in late June of 2020. And it talks about how it is further assumed that construction of each pipeline segment will progress at a rate of 200 feet a day, five days a week, or roughly 4,000 feet every 30 days. 200 feet a day, is that realistic? 
because you're going to be, uh, if this goes through, you would be going through some very urban areas, uh, traffic delays. Um, I think you're in for a nightmare. And I know you signed a, a statement of overriding considerations to, uh, to just scoot around that, but this is huge, not to mention the 18 stream crossings that this project would do. And it talks about the uh, pond turtle relocation and 100 feet vegetation clearance and clearance for staging areas, yet the staging areas were never identified in the EIR. All right, thank you very much. Um, you talk about educational outreach and I would actually like to see a forum with Becky Steinbrenner on educational outreach. I heard two of you on the radio lauding this pu pure water plan, but we aren't hearing the real problems, each, some of which you just heard enumerated here with this whole project. And I've, I've mentioned this before, this book keeps coming to mind and you're hearing pure water, pure water all the time, all the time. And I, I'm thinking this is pure poop water. They just keep saying pure water, but this is not really pure water. The book Toxic Sludge is Good For You by John Stopper and Sheldon Rampton. Toxic sludge is good for you. Lies, damn lies, and the public relations industry. And there are quotes in there of, of the public relations industry that go, you know, work arm in arm with the corporations. And it's one of these firms says, the role of our communication is to manage perceptions which motivates behavior to create business results. I think we're talking about big business results here. And manage perception, you know, oh, we've got to do this. Uh, this is a behavior we've got to do. We've got to give money to all these corporations. And then people, when they hear oft repeated lies and or misinformation, it's like they're in a, a frame and to try to get something in to this misperception or misperception, the truth bounces off. I'm for truth telling and there's big problems here. And I would like to see this project halted. I think a disaster is in the future here if you proceed. And once you put those poisons in the water, and I've said it before, it sounds like fracking to me, injecting this horrible stuff into the groundwater, the, the aquifers that have been there for eons of time, but to deliberately put what you're putting in there that sounds to me like a, a chemical soup. It's just <coughs> a disaster on the horizon, and you're so self-assured that this is this will work, this will be the way. Very dangerous. Thank you, and I'm just, yeah, I just would like to just say that we just disagree and we're basing ours on, I'm afraid I feel that you're quite misinformed and I would recommend that you read the study that was pretty detailed about the safety of the water that we, we had done. But that conducts that that uh, I'd like just yeah. to make one comment. This water needs to have minerals added back into it because it, it is so, uh, the minerals were taken out by the process. That it's, so there's, it's a mis misconception thinking that this water is, is, is toxic sludge. Okay, any um, board members wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion. We I'll make six motions, basically. Okay. I'll Approval. second the six motions. Moved. And would would yep. you be willing to add that we have an update on the on the uh, outreach? Yes. Maybe every what half year? You half think? year. Yeah. Half mm -hmm. year. An yes, update I'll, on the I'll expenditures I'll for data. I'll my motion to exclude that. Okay. 
And I'll amend my second. Okay. <laughs> Roll amended. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed? Hey, that carries. Um, I'd just we like to make a, a yeah. statement that uh, some of the information that Ms. Steinbrunner said regarding the statement of overriding consideration stuff was incorrect, so I just want to put make, make that right. statement. And I'll, I'll rec yeah. you know, if they have questions about the city's response to her characterization of the Water Commission meeting, I suggest they talk with um, the director of the Santa Cruz Water Department, Rosemary Menard. Six, Three. Six, three, a happy one. A happy one. Let's end on a happy note. How's that? <laughs> That's great. Um, so I uh, shared with the board that the district was recently made aware that we are being recognized as a top workplace uh, by the Bay Area, excuse me, the Bay Area News Group. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we're, we will be having the, um, the publication will be released on this Sunday, the 23rd. Um, and it's a standalone publication that the Bay Area News Group provides to um, all of its newspapers as, a, as an insert. And I provided a copy link uh, in the packet, so hopefully you've had an opportunity to take a look at what that um, publication looks like. Um, the 2018 version was included, so you have a, an, a view of, of what we can expect to see with some uh, familiar faces, hopefully, at Soquel Creek Water District included in that, in that recognition. Um, we will be um, going to Santa Clara, actually, on Thursday to receive that recognition, and we may receive, at that time, um, kind of our ranking. Um, as the memo indicates, this ranking was actually kind of a uh, side note to what we felt was a really um, important survey that we um, put out to our employees and the results of that sur the results of the survey and the data that came from that survey actually um, w was used in comparison with, with many other industries and we received that ranking so we're very proud of our employees and uh, hope to keep doing good things so and thank you for all your input and Ron you too yeah just a shout out to Tracy for number one doing the um, getting the survey done and really this wasn't even on our radar, um, the top workplace uh, being recognized for that. But it does go to the core, I think, th as an organization we work a lot on. I know Tracy and I spend a lot of time on just trying to get that very bottom cultural piece right. And it's not easy. It's a constant, uh, you can never stop, you know. <laughs> and it's one of those sayings, you think you're there and then you got more work to do. but. It, uh, if nothing else, it is front and center for us because it's the platform from which we can really excel as, a, as an organization. If we don't get that right, uh, you, it's hard to really get much above that. So we continue to, to strive and thank you for your efforts on that, Tracy. And, and all the managers too. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a 46 and a half person effort plus a board <laughs> plus a legal counsel 45.8 45.8 whatever okay uh, effort so thanks to the whole organization. thank you and any comment from the board great okay, good. any public comment on that item okay well then we will go to closed session yeah. comment on closed session pardon comment, comment on closed, closed session. session yeah thank you Becky Steinbrunner um, I'm the petitioner <coughs> in uh, case 19CV00181. And um, I just want to let you know that I've been working very hard. Um, I don't know what you're going to hear <laughs> from Mr. Basso. Mr. Basso, I really want to thank you for hosting that telephone conference in your office last week. That helped a lot. And we're still working hard at trying to come to resolution on the um, administrative record. I have. Um, in doing some research, I have learned more than what I knew at the initial um, case. Um, my first discussion about this case with Michelle Ouellet from Best Best and Krieger, so I have written some information about that. But our first case management conference is coming up Thursday. The judge has been disqualified. Judge Burdick will no longer be hearing our case, and it will now be heard by Judge John Gallagher. And um, I want to assure you that I'm doing this because I care about the public. 
I care about the environment mm -hmm. and I'm not convinced by what I see. I'm not convinced that the environmental review on this project was thorough and I'm not convinced that the people of Light Oak were given a fair shake in being able to say at the appropriate times when it could make a difference what was coming to their neighborhood. So I'm doing this <laughs> and I'm spending a lot of my time and I'm not getting paid big bucks. I'm not getting paid anything. But I'm doing this because I care, not because I'm trying to be an obstructionist, not be because I'm trying to keep secrets or anything like that or hold the record hostage as I've been accused of multiple times. I'm working very hard. But I'm not an attorney and I'm not familiar with litigation process, so I'm having to work very hard. I'm spending hours every day in the county law library to learn. And I'm doing my best because I care about the people, the community, the environment, and the long-term impacts that a project like this could have. And what I want to ask is why isn't the district looking at using this water for irrigation instead of injecting it into the groundwater supply that gives the potable water supply for not only people in your district, but others. And those others have no say. That's what's really bothering me a lot. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to closed session now. Thank you. Oh, we, have we have one more. Oh, oh. this is on, on, on the closed, closed session, session item. I want to say I support everything Becky Steinbrenner said. She's someone who I've known over the years who is working to defend our rights and have a healthy environment. She researches thoroughly and I think she's right on the mark in what she has researched here. She's not paid. We need a lot more people who are looking carefully at government policies and proposed policies and evaluating them and digging deep and revealing the truth. What I see is the truth that's going on and you know, like being whistleblowers. These are people who should be listened to carefully so that we can make wise decisions. That's, that's my comment, so I, okay. I support Becky Steinbrenner on this. Um, thank you. Thank you, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say that you know, we're all here because we wanna do the best thing for the district, and I'm glad that's your motivation. I'm, we just try to base ours on the best science available, and I unfortunately think some of yours is based on misinformation, but that we can agree to disagree. And we will turn to a closed session.